You never took like a violence pinch, did you? Yeah, I did. The, you did? R- the battery on the police officer. Oh, that's right. But that was just a county stretch. No, that was four years in prison. So you you got that added on top yeah. of your uh on top two of year your two year drug charge. Right. Yeah. So did you get a strike for that? No. Nah, that see, so because it was called a battery, and that's the only reason why I was able to get the year off my sentence in the a drug program, because it wasn't a strike. Mm. You know what I mean? So I was I was fortunate and I had a paid attorney. Obviously, every time I went, I had mm. paid attorneys. But my attorney finagled it because he went in there. Initially, he was like, bro, this is a, a, a resistant arrest thing. We're going to get this ran with the other thing and it's going to be no problem. But then he got the police report. And I guess in the police report, it said that I was I hit the cop with the uh, handcuff. Like I ripped the handcuff out of his hand. I hit him with it. And uh, he was saying like the the police report was much more extravagant than what the charges look like. Mm-hmm. So he was like, we're not going to be able to do what I thought. He goes, but I can get you this four year, four month plea right now. And it's not a strike. It will be used as a strike if you ever come back into the state system with another violent crime. So it was like, I had to do 85% of my time and everything, mm-hmm. but it yeah. wasn't a strikeable offense. How did the cop end up getting his leg broke? It was violent, bro. It was, it was, uh, what happened? So, <laughs> so, so my dumb ass was on dope. The cops pull us over and I'm in the back seat. I got two girls in the front seat. So I hand the girl like an ounce of dope and, and I had my little special acetone cleaned up dope yeah. that I put in my pants for some reason. So the cops are sitting there, they're talking to the, the girls or whatever. And then they come to me and they're like, Hey, do you got an ID? And I'm already on the run. I've already got a, uh, I resisted arrest from some other cop. I'm on probation on the run for all this other. Shit. So I told him, I don't have no ID. He said, what's your name? And I told him Wayne Wallace. And he goes, uh, when was you born? I told him it's my friend. So I gave him all this, fake information Mm -hmm. and uh the other cop was like i mean what what are you thinking and he was like yeah just go ahead and let me step out the car so i could search you so he's searching me don't find nothing and this pulled my pants out like that bro and reached in my pants and grabbed the dope and i was like in my brain i'm like this motherfucker just reached in my pants bro i've never had that happen (laughs) and he's like what the is this and i said it's dope (laughs) and he said well you're under a rest i said all right so he put the handcuff on me bro and i just was like i'm not ready so i yanked that out of him attacked him and his partner and we was fighting bro we were fighting for fucking seven minutes there was two of them so at the at the very end the one cop had my the handcuff the like the extra handcuff that wasn't on my wrist and he was holding he was like in the uh almost a fetal position, you know, that like he was hugged down, just holding on to that thing. And the other cop had my legs. And then, uh, finally when the backup came, the f- cop just came and got underneath me and just maced the fuck out of me. <laughs> Point bro. blank this rage. was like this. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. It was, wow. But so they, was, they wasn't up, happy. How'd you end up breaking the cop's legs? I don't know. I don't just know. Just in the mayhem. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're lucky they didn't, you know, maim you. Bro, I got, oh, I know. I, but they couldn't do nothing, bro. They didn't, there was no point at, yeah, they could have done that afterwards. But the, the, uh, unique thing was, bro, it looked like I was completely covered in blood. Yeah. You know what I mean? From the, one of the cops must've been bleeding everywhere because wow. everywhere on me was blood. So when I got to the hospital, the nurse was livid, right? She's wiping all this off me thinking that she's going to have to like nurse some wounds. None of these wounds are from him. <laughs> None of this is his blood. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So, she was, she was mad. So when you went up for that, did they, did the cops give you respect? Cause they see the paperwork. They're like, Oh, this guy assaulted a cop. Did they, did, did they treat you differently when you were in prison? Uh, no, they treated me differently because of like the reputation. Right, probably. Right. You know, after I got, after in the feds, after I got out of the hole from that whole little Aryan Brotherhood trial, and I think I had like a uh, an altercation where me and a couple of my friends ended up fighting a couple other dudes. Like when we came back to the yard, it was just like a whole different, a whole different energy. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like people started talking about um, who I was associated with, and you know, cops started telling certain inmates. Yeah. These inmates started telling everybody, and it's just like the whole way people treated. Mm. 
us became different. Did you, uh, when you did your state bid, did you see, was there any violence? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Violence in our state prisons is extravagant, man. It's, it's a regular occurrence, man. It's yeah. just, um, them South Siders, the Northern and South Siders are treacherous, man. Them dudes stayed at war. Yeah. If it wasn't with the Northerners, they was beefing with the blacks. It was just, it was constant, bro. I've wow. seen treacherous shit in the state prison. Which was the worst? Uh, the stabbings or like San Quentin. I watched a, somebody died in that motherfucker. They, they put us all against the wall, came through with the, uh, with the thing, bringing that motherfucker to the medical area, bro. It was, it was, and that was when I first got there. That was intake. So yeah, that was like the reception center. You know, obviously it probably happened in the adjustment center, but yeah. yeah. Wow. That's wild. When but you the first violence get in. never bothered me, man. It was, the, 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 uh, like violence was never a weird thing to me. Like it didn't man. bother you seeing somebody get stabbed? No. Like, uh, no. Yeah, no. Did you ever carry a shank? Yeah. Everybody had to carry a shank, right? Not everybody, but bro. And, and I realized the difference between state prison and federal prison when somebody brought me a muff. Some dude was like, Maddie, I found a, a, a knife out on the, the weight pile yard. And we tried to keep him off the weight pile yard because they would take the weights if they found something like that yeah. so he was like i found a knife over there uh i was like all right bring it to me that motherfucker brought me a sword bro i was like <laughs> nah i don't even want that so let's stash that motherfucker in the ceiling somewhere bro and forgot about it the bone crusher the bone crusher bro that motherfucker would have went through us it does look like an aladdin sword that you'd be wearing on you know yes. your hip in arabia yeah you're like bro where are you even gonna stash that thing yeah, yeah. god and that was in the feds that was in the feds yeah they got pieces of steel they got them. Whatever you could, I mean, they had their little industry area back there, bro. You could have had yeah. anything made. Yeah. You could have had that most jagged edged and mm. <laughs> looking like a Rambo knife. Yeah, custom, custom made. Be like, that's not a knife. That's this a, is knife. a knife. Yeah. Did you ever get tested with the knife in there? Did anybody come at you? No. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah. Just because you had your respect. Yeah. I think that, uh, but were you ready though? Yeah. When you went in to do your bid, did you go in with the mentality day for day? Like good time? No. No. You wanted to get your good time. Yeah. Bro, I don't I didn't see a lot of I I feel like a lot of white dudes like me get into them places and for some reason that whole release date thing doesn't register. It's like they They take prison so seriously. Yeah. So in me, it's like, bro, I wanted to go home, man. I felt like the best me. And the, the best that I could possibly do is at home. You know? mm -hmm. Even though, well, it didn't stop you from like no. putting in a lot of work in there. Yeah. But maybe that was just like on more of the drug and the hustle side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I didn't want to spend my whole life in prison. You know what I mean? Was the... Did that I worry you? There. Because it seems like when you go into a state prison in California, that's like a level three or higher. And especially when you're in a car your odds of having to put in work that could catch you a life sentence are, are high. You know what I mean? Like yeah. did, did that, but bro, like, did that worry you? No, because I was a different kind of cat, bro. I, I even at 20 years old, when I first got to prison, I still thought I was the, shit. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, nah, you guys, like I'm a, I'm a hog. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I'm a ride with you guys, but whatever. But so my car, I kind of feel like, because of the reputation of my parents was like, it wasn't like there was like, okay, we just got a new torpedo on the yard. Right. It was like, nah, we got a homeboy on the yard. This mm -hmm. dude's a savage like we are. Yeah. So he's already one of us. Yeah. Do you think uh, you're the perfect person to ask about this? The movie Shot Caller? Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. Was that accurate? Uh, I think like the most accurate part of that to me was how a, a person could come in that ain't really from the life and all that type of shit. And it's just like, they get caught up in that and it just spirals out of control, bro. And it happens a lot of times to the people that come in that ain't, that ain't the typical gangsters because then people are like, Oh, this new dude right here, you're running with the white boys. Here's a knife. Go handle that for us. You know what I mean? And before you know it, this dude done stabbed once, then he gets to a higher level security. Next thing you know, he's in the shoe learning the tricks of the trade and, now he's got a life sentence and he's one of the homies. So that could really happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how it happens.